we are dipping into the viewer mailbag again, this time from Daniel Ashkenazi. Who would you rank as the best and worst Montreal Canadiens captains? Uh, I guess we can go about in the same style that we did in our trending up, trending down bonus video, which should be out by now. Um, I'm going to start with you, Jess, then we'll go to Stu, then we'll go to Rick. Uh, Jess, give me your best Montreal Canadiens captain. Well, I'm happy I get to go first because Jean Beliveau, you know, I think he is the ultimate one uh, across the league. You know, there there was no other captain like him. And he was someone, too, that just didn't stick to, to hockey. He was a well-respected man outside of hockey. Everyone knew who he was. And I think he really set the tone of what it's like to be the captain of the Montreal Canadiens. This organization isn't just a hockey team for this city, that it's way more than that. And you have a responsibility for the community and to give back. And I remember when he passed away, I was at TSN 690 at the time. And I think Melnick just had a whole hour of his show of callers talking about different times people ran into Jean Beliveau and the things that he did. And he always had time for fans to sign autographs, to make phone calls to, you know, people's grandkids and, and to give back. If I'm not mistaken, the blood drive that the Canadians do every year was started by Jean Beliveau. And uh, I to that and because of that, you know, that's part of the reason why. Uh, I picked him as number one. And of course, what he was able to do on the ice, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, so to me, that's that's really the no-brainer. Yeah, I should true. add this before you start. Feel free to say the same answer because I'm not <laughs> sure how much better you can get than John Beliveau. I mean, this franchise has been lucky to have so many good captains. You know, Serge Savard, Bob Gainey, Saku Koivu was a captain uh, for the younger generation. But yeah, I mean, John Beliveau was at the top of the list. He's everything you wanted from a captain on and off the ice and you know as just mentioned i remember after he passed away and we ran st stories in the gazette fans weren't talking about his 500th goal or the stanley cups they were talking about having met him away from the ice and just how kind he was and how much of a gentleman he was and how great he was and i remember that he had an exchange visit that he organized every year where kids from quebec would go out to western canada play there and then they'd come back and they'd live together and it was english french thing it was everything i remember being at the forum and Beliveau was there and he was signing autographs for kids. And just before he was signing autographs, I was supposed to interview him. And I said, you know, Mr. Beliveau, I'm with the Gazette. Would you mind uh, if I answer a couple of questions? He said, no problem. But first, just let me sign some autographs here. He signed autographs for like an hour. I remember his pen ran out of ink and he reached casually into his pocket and pulled out another pen. And just for an go. hour, I stood like every single person and parent there got an autograph. And when they were all gone, then he stopped. And then he said to me, okay, now I have time to speak with you. And he had all the time in the world. He understood what it meant to be a captain on and off the ice in this city. And it was so huge. And he was just such a gentleman. And I've never heard anybody say a bad word about him. And so many people have so many wonderful stories about meeting Jean Beliveau. And he was everything that you want in a captain on any team, and especially for the Montreal Canadiens. And like, and like you guys said, a, a class act, and you talk about stories, everybody has stories, and I have one, 1982, and I got traded to Montreal, and I'm going into the change room, and Jean Beliveau was sitting there on his stationary bike, reading the Globe and Mail, and he looked over to me, and he said, oh, hi, hi, Rick, welcome to Montreal, you're really going to enjoy it here. First time I ever met him, he ended up uh, opening up conversation about everything about hockey and the world and probably could have talked to him the whole day. That's the type of individual he was, just a, a super person and just a really, really nice man. And uh, he, he's the guy that, uh, you know, I mentioned as, uh, as the number one captain for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, after he passed away, I wrote a column uh, saying, what would John Beliveau do would be a course they should teach in universities in whatever – happens in life before you make a decision and think what would John Beliveau do in this situation and he, he just made the right decision all the time it seemed and and how many people can you say that about not just in hockey but in life in general I think if there was one Montreal Canadiens player past present living dead who I would ever want to meet it would probably be him just because of all the stories from from journalists like yourselves and and other fans who have just spoke nothing but great things about him just the the epitome of class uh, not just through the franchise but just you could probably open up a dictionary and find Jean Beliveau's photo next to the word class so I'm not surprised that uh, we are all unanimous for best captain being Jean Beliveau where it gets to be very interesting is who uh, the worst captain is Rick 
Uh, Max Pacioretty. Damn. Um, All right. We, yeah. we go in there. He's, uh, he, he's a guy that kind of took on that captaincy without really wanting it. And I think it really um, – it, it hindered his his ability to play because the, I think he felt there was a lot more pressure wearing that C than what he wanted. He wasn't the the type of personality that loved that, and he just wanted to go about his business without being in the limelight. And I, you know, in all fairness to him, without uh, nothing personal uh, against him other than it didn't really suit him. I don't think he really wanted it. And uh, I think it uh, it showed in his play when he did wear the C. I I think with Pacioretty, the C weighed heavily on him because he worried what everybody said and what everybody thought. Um, but he handled all the like win or lose, whether he had three goals or he was minus five, he was always there in his locker stall. And just can the test for this to answer the questions. I never hid. He answered all the questions. I think he took things too personally, which as a captain, he just he, he wasn't. There's born leaders, and he wasn't a born leader. And uh, I think the C weighed really heavily on him. Um, I'm not going to say the worst captain, but the most disappointing captain for me has been Shea Weber. Um, all the off-ice stuff, like we haven't heard from him since the Stanley Cup final last year. I think fans would love to know what's going on. He kept the C. Mark Bergeron wanted him to keep the C, but he hasn't been in Montreal. He, I think he hooked up with the team once when they were in Seattle. He hasn't been around. I don't know why Mark Bergevin didn't name an, another captain uh, to start the season. Um, but with Shea Weber, he's just, he hasn't, you know, we've talked about all the stories fans have about sharing time and stories with Jean Beliveau. I don't think Montreal fans have any stories like that about Shea Weber. And he's a, he's a leader. I mean, there's no doubt his leadership qualities in the room, but I don't think he ever, I don't know if he didn't understand or didn't grasp, just didn't want to do it. He never accepted the other responsibilities that come with being a captain, which are facing the media, which are dealing with the public, which are, I can't imagine the captain of any other pro sports team in North America, maybe beyond being in a situation he's in where his career, we don't know if he's ever going to play again. Is he out this season? What's going on? And we haven't heard from him. We haven't heard from him at all. Like just one, he came to town to, to have his knee checked out, take 15 minutes and, and, you know, I, he, I don't think he doesn't like talking to the media, but he never understood you're talking to the fans through the media, and to me that's been disappointing. I don't think he's uh, he he accepted or handled the other the off ice responsibilities that come with being captain of the Canadian. Can yeah, I, I agree. Oh, uh, sorry, I was just going to say I agree with Stu that that to me that's why Shea, Shea Weber is the one that I would say is the most disappointing captain is because, like I said, being captain of the Montreal Canadiens, you're not just the captain of the hockey team. This hockey team means so much more to the city, and you need to make a connection with the fans, with the community here in Montreal. And I don't think he's done that. Now, you can say Pacioretty probably wasn't the best captain either, but he moved here full-time, lived in Westmount. Uh, you saw him. He donated food to uh, to a food bank downtown. He had a golf tournament that he began here prior to being traded to, to give back to the community here at the Montreal General Hospital. With with Shea Weber, you know, what is his connection? You know, he did has done charity work, but he doesn't want to talk about the charity work that he's been doing, which if I'm the charity that he's doing work for, I would be pretty disappointed because other people will say, hey, this is the charity that Shea Weber's associated with. I want to give back to them as well. So I think that's why it's disappointing is that you're more than just the captain of the hockey team. You are the connection with this community. And he just doesn't seem to to care to try and create any kind of connection. Well, Pat Trady got really upset at me at one point um, when Weber joined the team. And I think it was Michelle Terry and his golf tournament. And Pat Trady and Weber showed up in the same car together. They drove and there was a scrum. And I asked Pat Trady, I said, have you thought about now that Weber's here, maybe giving up the C to Shea? And Max didn't like the question. And we talked about it afterwards. And as I said to him, you know, it's not like you're giving the C to Joe Blow. Like I thought maybe it would help your game not having that weight. And he was very upset. He said, no, I, I want to be captain of this team. I, I am, embrace being captain of this team. And as Rick said, I don't think he was the greatest leader as a captain. I just don't think it was in his personality. But he embraced the role. Like He embraced being captain and he tried to do – he tried to do the best he could with what he had, and and he under he understood that being captain of the Kings is more than just what you do on the ice or in the locker room. I also want to add too with with Shea Weber, hell of a player, hell of a leader for the Montreal Canadiens. But 
we were just talking about how Jean Beliveau has all these moments and, and stories that will stay with fans forever. How many of that, how much could you say that really about Shea Weber? Like really think about his tenure with the Montreal Canadiens and think of some of the best moments that Shea Weber has done. Not just the team, but just like Shea Weber. And think of how memorable of a player he is. Like like what comes to mind? Because because I've asked that question before. Uh, and like I've gotten stuff like, oh, some random goal here, stuff he did at the Olympics. <laughs> like, there's nothing that really stands out as like, and I guess that's just the player that he is, but that there's nothing that really stands out as like a, you know, wow, this guy should really be firmly embedded in Canadians history as an iconic player. He was just okay, he was a captain for a couple of years. But he's he's a private person. I understand that. But sometimes you have to step out of your comfort zone, right? Like Patch already had to step out of his comfort zone a, a little bit as captain. I wouldn't be surprised if we never hear from Shea Weber again. If the Canadians announce, you know, next beginning of next season he's retired, we might never hear from him. He might just that's it. Say Fini, it's over, and that's it. And and as you said, Julian, then what's the lasting memory of Shea Weber as captain of the Canadians? Okay, well they went to the Stanley Cup final. He obviously had a big role in that. But is there a a, a lasting memory for Canadians fans. Yeah, you'll have more memories of, of the guy he got treated for. <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm sure if you talk to fans, they'll come up with more memories for Max Pacioretty too than Shea Weber. I think you can make that argument as well. More memories from PK Subban for sure. Absolutely. Well, in any case, uh, interesting answers for worst captains being a little bit more modern, essentially the last two captains with Shea Weber and Max Pacioretty. And of course, Le Gros Bill, uh, Jean Beliveau, uh, best captain in Canadians history. I think we can all be unanimous in that. Thank you for the question and thank you for watching this bonus video. Subscribe to Hockey Inside Out on YouTube. Subscribe to the Hockey Inside Out newsletter, munchalkgazette.com slash newsletters. And of course, visit hockeyinsideout.com for more fun episodes, for full episodes, and other great stuff in between. 